generator functions expose a deep relationship between functions and iterators. A generator function is a special kind of function. Instead of returning values, it yields values. Now a function can normally just return once, but a generator function can yield many times. So a generator is an iterator that you get by calling a generator function. And a generator function is any old function, except for instead of having return statements, it has yield statements. And a normal function just returns once. A generator function yields multiple times. When a generator function is called, what you get back is not any of the values that it yields, but instead a generator, an iterator, that iterates over the yields. OK, let's all see how this actually works. Instead of writing letter iter, the iterator over letters, we're now going to write a generator. So an iterator class and a generator function serve much the same purpose. We give it the next letter that we want to yield and when we want to end. While next letter is less than n, we yield the next letter. So if we passed in a and e, we'd first yield a. Then we're going to rebind next letter to be the letter after whatever it is currently. Now all of this happens inside of a while statement, which means that these lines will be executed multiple times. Now, a return statement could only possibly be executed once, because after that you would return. But yield is special. You can yield multiple times, for instance, within the suite of a while. So, how do I use this? Well, I could write a for statement that says for letter in letters generator A through E, print the letter. And it will print A, and then B, and then C, and then D just as if I had created an iterator class. But all I needed to do was define this little function. And that yield statement gives it the power to create an iterator on the fly, use it in a for statement, in order to give access to these letters each in turn. Let's understand this more deeply. So the main idea is that we don't need this letter iter class, because instead we can just define a function a letter generator function, which takes in the first letter I want to yield, which we'll call next letter, and then the end. While it's the case that next letter is less than the end, I yield the current next letter. And then I update the next letter to be the letter after whatever is currently the next letter. So here we have to do the work of actually computing the numeric value of next letter, adding one to it, and then changing that back into a string. The logic is extremely similar to the next method in this iterator, but we don't have to explicitly worry about raising stop iteration, and we don't need a class or an object called self to keep track of what's going on. Instead, we just have the local name next letter and we yield it. So, so far, I've defined a letter generator, which is a function that, when called, returns an iterator. So it's called a generator object. But generators are types of iterators. They're ones that came from generator functions, which are functions that have yield in them. Since it's an iterator, I can call next on it. I can keep calling next until I get all the values and then I'll reach stop iteration. Now, how did that happen? We didn't have to explicitly raise stop iteration. It's just part of what it means to be a generator function, that when you get to the very end, you run out of things to yield, then stop iteration is raised. OK, so if we can use it as an iterator, then we should be able to use it in a for statement. For letter in the letter generator, that starts at A and goes to E, we would like to print out the letter. And here we see it printing the letters of the alphabet. So what is this good for? Well, it's a simplification mechanism. 
It allows us to not have to keep track of all this different stuff if I can just express the logic that I want in terms of a function. So I could, in fact, delete all of that, and instead of returning letter iter, I'll just return what you get from letter generator. Now it's the case that if I create some letters, I can put them in a list, I could put them in a tuple, I could even iterate over them, and printing each letter out will print out A, B, C, D, E. 